Ruth Handler was confident and determined on the eve of the 1959 American International Toy Fair in New York. As president of Mattel, the company founded by her husband Elliot along with Harold Matt Matson, a friend of Elliot's, in 1945, she was a tenacious businessman who trusted her instincts. Despite the skeptics in her own company, Ruth was convinced that her new doll, named after her daughter Barbara, would be a real hit, and she did not lose out. Ruth's childhood, which became one of the most impressive careers in the toy industry, was not normal at all, according to generally accepted norms. She was born in November 1916 in Denver and was one of ten children in the family. Her parents lived in Warsaw when it was occupied by Russia. Her father, Jacob Moscovich, Moscow, was a blacksmith by profession when he arrived on Ellis Island in 1907, and because he was a qualified professional, he was sent to Denver, the center of the railroad industry, where blacksmiths were used to make and repair railroad tracks. In 1908, Ada came to America with six children and joined her husband in Colorado. She was 40 years old at the time, and she was ill when Ruth was born, she did not have the opportunity to take care of her newborn daughter, so Ruth, who was only six months old, was taken in by her older sister Sarah. For the next 19 years, she lived with her sister and her husband Louis, who were Ruth's parents, while her real parents were rather loving grandparents. Ruth grew up a tomboy and enjoyed the company of rude and awkward boys, not girls. Dolls? Barely. She also enjoyed working, especially at the family pharmacy and soda stand. It was there that she developed an enthusiasm for business. The idea of women working outside the home was not unusual for a family. In poor Poland, everyone worked to make ends meet. Hard work and perseverance served her well when she founded one of the most successful toy manufacturing companies in history. Ruth met Elliot Handler at a dance when she was 16 years old. He was an aspiring artist. The family did not approve of the idea that her future would be linked to the fate of a starving artist. But love inspires, making you believe in the best. Ruth soon moved to Los Angeles, where she got a job as a secretary at Paramount Pictures. Elliot followed her to California. They got married in 1938. The couple had two children, Barbara and Ken, names that will soon become familiar to millions of children around the world. Elliot was fascinated by new materials, especially an acrylic plastic called lucite or plexiglass, which was used in the defense industry. Elliot's design skills, combined with Ruth's enthusiasm for sales, formed the basis of a powerful team. Elliot started making furniture, and Ruth suggested they start a furniture business together. She was a salesperson for the company and signed contracts with a number of well-known companies. It was at this time that the girl fully realized her potential in business. In 1945, together with business partner Harold Matson, Elliot and Ruth opened a garage workshop. The name Mattel was chosen as a combination of the surname Matson and the name Elliot. However, Harold soon sold his stake in the company which meant that Ruth and Elliot gained full control of the company. Initially, they sold picture frames, and then her husband started making dollhouse furniture, which proved so successful that Mattel switched only to toy production. Mattel's first bestseller was the toy ukulele Yukadoodle, which became the first in the line of musical toys. In 1955, the company acquired the rights to manufacture Mickey Mouse Club products. Business was booming, but things were going much better. One day, while watching her daughter play make-believe with paper dolls, Ruth noticed that Barbara was pretending that her dolls were college students, cheerleaders, or adult successful businesswomen, and she was fascinated by what she saw. Before Barbie was born, many dolls for little girls were from the baby doll series, Cupie dolls, dolls in diapers and the like, says Sandy Holder, owner of Sandy Holder's Doll Attic, a leading Barbie auction house, and author of the book Barbie, A Rare Beauty. These dolls encouraged parenting and motherhood and perpetuated the idea that a girl's future is determined by the role of mother and housewife, Sandy said. Barbie was born out of a desire to give girls something more. And no wonder, because, according to Ruth, Barbie was a symbol of freedom and opportunity for young girls and women. Perhaps because of her own childhood and a completely different background than most, Ruth sought to fill the void that she knew existed by watching her daughter play. It took three years to create the first Barbie doll, which debuted at a toy fair more than 60 years ago. 
Two stories are often cited as Ruth's inspiration for creating a Barbie doll. First, she saw her daughter Barbara playing with paper dolls at home and wanted to create a more realistic and tangible toy that would embody who the girls wanted to be. Another thing is that during a family trip to Switzerland, Ruth saw in a shop window a German doll build Lily, which differed from other dolls sold at that time in that it had frankly adult forms and was a collectible, not intended for sale to children. Fired up with ideas, Ruth bought it and used it as the basis for her design for Barbie. In 1959, Mattel introduced Barbie, a teenage fashion model, to skeptical shoppers at the annual toy fair in New York. The doll was noticeably different from the dolls popular at that time for infants and toddlers, since it had the body of an adult. Ruth was confident in the successful launch of the event in New York, which was attended by more than 16,000 wholesale and retail customers from stores around the world. Barbie in her black and white striped swimsuit, high-heeled shoes and sunglasses at a modest retail price of $3, will undoubtedly become a real hit, but only initially such a toy was perceived with hostility. A New York Times article about the toy show said that Mattel's most popular product in the coming years would be a two-stage plastic rocket a yard long that soars to a height of about 200 feet. Also mentioned Mattel's new toy guns. Only a couple of paragraphs were devoted to the new Barbie doll. Toy buyers were also not impressed. About half of the customers who saw her wanted nothing to do with the doll. They had never seen a doll so different from the dolls popular at that time for babies, toddlers and girls. Many were scared off by the feminine figure of the doll. To put it mildly, they didn't share Ruth's enthusiasm. Ruth, little girls want dolls, one customer said in a story told by Barbie Mom in her autobiography. They want to pretend to be mothers. Ruth was shocked by this statement because her brainchild was rejected. However, she did not give up and continued to insist on her own. One of my strengths is that I have the courage to stand up for my beliefs and take a firm stand, defend it and follow it," Ruth wrote in her autobiography. I can be very persuasive to make others see the light. Thanks to Ruth's tenacity and perseverance, Barbie made her debut after all. In the first year, Mattel sold 300,000 dolls for $3 apiece, and today the first Barbie model in excellent condition can cost up to $27,000. Outfits and accessories based on the latest trends of the Parisian fashion catwalks were sold separately at a price of $1 to $5. To date, more than 70 fashion designers have created clothes for Mattel using hundreds of thousands of meters of different fabrics. By the time Ken, Barbie's boyfriend, appeared on store shelves in 1961, nothing could stop the teenage doll from becoming the queen of the toy world. Despite the fact that some disputed its unreal beauty and physique, Barbie often presented herself to little girls in a new role. In 1963, it graduated from college when few women studied there, in 1973, it was a surgeon, in 1986, a business executive, in 1990, a top-level diplomat and airline pilot, and it was a presidential candidate several times. Barbie became an astronaut in 1965, almost 20 years before Sally Ride became the first American woman to travel in space aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger in 1983. Barbie was either a brunette or a blonde, and in 1961 a doll with red hair was released. In 1980, the first African American and Latin American Barbies were introduced. In 1965, Barbie had flexible legs and eyes that opened and closed. In 1967, the twist turn Barbie was released, which had a movable body curved at the waist, but the best-selling Barbie doll of all time was the 1992 fully hairy doll, which had hair from the top of its head to its toes. Sixty years after its debut, it is estimated that over a billion Barbie dolls have been sold in more than 150 countries. Ruth helped run Mattel for 30 years until she and her husband, then co-chairman of the company, retired in 1975. She survived breast cancer and after undergoing a mastectomy in 1970, Ruth explored the market in search of a suitable breast prosthesis. Disappointed with the available options, she set about creating an artificial breast that would look more like a natural one, 
and in 1975 she received a patent for a nearly me prosthesis made of a material close in weight and density to a natural breast. The invention became popular and was even used by First Lady Betty Ford. Ruth died in 2002 at the age of 85, and her legacy, the famous Barbie doll, still remains one of the best-selling and sought-after toys in the world.